Well, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, our, uh, our four o'clock mass will be celebrated by Father John and, and Deacon Tom. The mass intentions are for parishioners, Pat Mitchell, Maureen Mitchell Johnson. Parish registration takes place this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. in the Paris Life Center. Join us at the Stations of the Cross every Friday during Lent at 7 p.m. Soup and Theology is every Monday evening during Lent. We will explore the true meaning of our Nicene Creed with Bishop Robert Barron. The St. George Caregiver Group will meet on Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the Parish Life Center. All men of the parish, all men of the parish are invited to join St. George Men's Club for an evening of faith and fellowship this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. in the Parish Life Center. Would you like to win $10,000? There is only one week left until St. George School annual strike at Rich Raffle. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, please contact the rectory or our school. The Super Spring Bing Super Bingo is coming this Saturday, March 23rd. Doors open at 11. The raffle winner will be drawn at this event. Come out and enjoy the fun and bring a friend too. What well, can we can we please silence all cell phones and stand and greet one another to the Lord? And good afternoon again to you. Please join in our opening song, which is not a big band chart, number 504, Unless a Grain of Wheat, the song we reviewed a few minutes ago. Number 504, please join in. afternoon. Thank you for coming here to St. George and to all those who are listening out in Radio Land and in our beautiful parking lot. Welcome. And let us now begin our holy time of prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And beloved, may the graces of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, please kneel with me as we ask forgiveness of our sins. I confess Almighty to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned through my fault. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will re- when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within their hearts and write it within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. From all the from all from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. This refrain happens two times each time.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he had suffered. And when he was perfect, when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. May the word of God be in our minds, our lips, and our hearts. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen. Amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it. For eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm not quite uh, sure how to start this particular homily. Uh, You you know, some of the parishioners are, are, well, this is how it sounded. St. Patrick's Day is coming up, Father. Don't forget about St. Patrick's Day. And and, and then there were some other voices. You know, St. Joseph's Day is coming up, Father. Don't forget about St. Joseph's Day. And I must admit, I do love corned beef. And among the St. Joseph's Day is often a sweet table. So I love digging into sweet tables, diving into them. So I figured I'd do a compromise. Between the 17th, for those who celebrate St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, For those of you who uh, prefer, say, the 19th St. Joseph's Day, happy St. Joseph's Day. 
My compromise was on the 18th, which is St. Constantine Day. It's like, who's that? I say, celebrate all three days. Just go for it. Just go for it. And you know, this is the beauty, one of the greatest beauties of the Catholic Church, is that we have something called a communion of saints, which means that over 2,000 years, there's a connection with so many people across every country, every nation, every language, every culture, every continent, there's connection. As we gather today at St. George at the 4 o'clock Mass, and I do love the 4 o'clock Mass because by 5 o'clock, Father John can be out there in his favorite restaurant, not bad for Tinley Park, Orland Park, I tell you. <laughs> but we connect to other Masses at St. George, or Masses in the weekday. All these Masses are really one Mass. It started on Holy Thursday with the Last Supper. And it continued on and will continue on until the Father says, Son, Jesus, go back and gather the clan. Gather the family. It's, it's, a, it's a wide span of time. But it's really one Mass said by one priest, Jesus Christ, the High Priest. It's one long sacrifice, one long celebration. And we enter into this with the souls of purgatory, with the angels, with all the saints. And this is what, I, what I'm trying to get at with the communion of saints, is that we are part of something bigger than I'm an individual or, 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 or we're a group. It, it's something much more universal. Do you know, the word in English, Catholic, going back to its Latin root, catario, means universal. It was a label that was adopted very early on because it included not only the early Jewish followers, but people well beyond what they would call the God-fearers, or sometimes they called them Gentiles. Today's gospel, some of the Greeks who are there for the high holy days, uh, that is the celebrations that were coming up, the same celebrations where Jesus would enter and the palms were laid out as we celebrate Palm Sunday coming up, the same Passover event was getting ready and Jesus would dine at that last supper as we celebrate Holy Thursday, he would go to a cross the following day, be placed in the tomb until the day of resurrection. All these days are coming up, by the way, the most holiest, most sacred days of all. And we're able to gather, the universal people are able to gather and celebrate this. I encourage you, come participate, celebrate. The Lord wants to sweep you off his feet, sweep you literally, and tell you how precious and loved you are. Return the holy kiss. Come if you can. Participate. Be participating in the life of Christ. Isn't that glorious? And anyone can do it. Anyone can walk in a church come to any service, be even at home and participate. These small group of Greek people who came, they came to Philip, who took them over to Andrew, Peter's brother, and then eventually both of them went to Jesus. They knew where to find him. You know, it's interesting, Everything's happening in a very exclusive way among the Jewish clan. Not the Gentiles, not the Greeks, the outsiders. But they heard about Jesus. They're good people. They're God-fearing. They're outsiders, but they're God-fearing outsiders. 
Jesus didn't have to talk to them. He didn't have to even be polite. It was frowned upon going out to others who were not part of the chosen people, the Jewish people. But Philip, oh, by the way, Philip is a Greek name. It's not a Jewish name. It'd be like calling me, you know, Johan, if I, like I was Austrian, or Ivan, like I was Russian. Father Ivan. How does that sound, everybody? Father Johan. <laughs> Philip would have been picked on. You know, that doesn't sound Jewish to me, boy. Same with Andrew. Andrew is Greek. It means strong. So you have these Greek people coming to some of the disciples with these Greek names, trying to ask a favor. We want to see Jesus. Seeing does not mean I visually want to come and see Jesus. The Greek word see means to see the inside of you. So let's have dinner together for a few hours and we'll see you and you'll see me. They're asking for a special favor more than just, oh, hi, Jesus, nice to meet you. Next. So they're doing an act of faith. They're stepping out in an act of faith. And what I'm trying to tell you in this is that outside people beyond the norms were already very interested in Jesus Christ. And it's because of these very early people that we, we are the new Gentiles. We are the outsiders. We are the ones who want to come inside. And Jesus says, come, let them come. You know, we often think of Palm Sunday as the beginning of the Holy Week. And then all the events that occurred, Holy Thursday, Friday, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the empty tomb. But the starting gun of the event were these little group of Greeks asking to see Jesus. This outsider group. And they were able to get to Jesus. Philip, Andrew, came to Jesus and said, we have people, who, they're, they're not Jewish, Jesus, but, but, but they're God-fearing people. They're good people. C can they have time with you? And what does Jesus tell them? Throughout the Gospel of John, five times, he kept saying, it is not my hour yet. The wedding of Cana, the mother Mary, they're out of wine, my son. What is she told? What has this got to do with me? It's not my hour, woman. And other examples. But Jesus now says, hearing that this group of Greek people want to see him, he stands up and he proclaims, Now, now my hour has come. He says, Amen. Amen, I say to you. Loudly, my hour has come. Why did Jesus say that? How is it that the hour has come? You know, the revelation of Father, Son, and Spirit as a trinity occurred when Jesus went to the River Jordan. Do you remember that story? He began his public ministry of three years. He went to John the Baptist into the waters out he came, the Son of God, the voice of the Father was heard. The Spirit descended like a, a shaft of light and dove. Just like in the window here, we have that confirmation, that Spirit and dove. And John the Baptist heard it. Behold the Lamb of God. How about the transfiguration? Three of the disciples went along with. And only they experienced and They were told not to say anything about what they had seen of Jesus Christ's transfiguration. Or when Jesus dies on the cross, outside of the high temple and the walls of Jerusalem, and God the Father comes into the Holy of Holies and splits the curtain that divides the people from God and throws it open so that all may have access. 
once more there's an appearance of the Holy Trinity. And this is where the Greeks came in. For when Jesus declares this, now my hour has come. Father, to you do I give the glory. Give the glory. I have glorified you, Son, and I will glorify you again. People are saying, is that thunder, the crowds that were there hearing? Is that the angels speaking? What is this? The Trinity was revealed at these important times in Jesus' life. This was one of the four, which is why I stressed it as such. And the kickoff gun was not among the Jewish people or the high leaders, but about outsiders. Can we become insiders? That's what we're all doing right now. Look very carefully. Look very carefully. Can we become insiders? Can we see you, Jesus? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us say together the Nissan Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, comes substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He was sent into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one and holy Catholic and apostolic church. I am finished one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the forgiveness of the dead, and life for the world to come. Let us now open our hearts and place our petitions before our Father in heaven. For the church, may we support all church leaders and help follow in the footsteps of St. Patrick and St. Joseph as they teach and guide us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil authorities, may they through prayer and prayer meditation grow to value the enduring power of love and charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For increased vocations for all diverse ministries which give life and abundance to the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us, may we imitate Christ and how he offers himself for us on the cross in the Eucharist, generously giving of ourselves to honor and uphold the dignity of our sisters and brothers around the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those dedicated to faith formation, for those with whom they share the treasures of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those in their final hour, and for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, may they see the glory of God. We remember especially Marguerite Brennan, Antoinette Zaro, and for all the poor souls in purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we have opened our hearts and minds to you, Father in heaven, and ask that you hear all these prayers 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please turn to song number 479 and join in singing Shelter Me, O God, number 479. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in us your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the workings of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For Jesus Christ, as true man, he wept over the cries of Lazarus, his friend. And as the eternal God, he raised him from the tomb. And just as, taking pity on all the human race, he leads us by his sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaze, our Cardinal, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us put our voices and hearts together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And beloved, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. 
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter onto my room, but only say the word. Please join in our communion song, number 342, I Am the Bread of Life, 342.
I invite you to turn in the hymnal to song 379. We can bless each other as we sing the Irish blessing, number 379. Please join in. And let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And once again, on behalf of myself, uh, Deacon Tom, Father Paul, our deacons, our staff, and all the family of St. George, a very blessed and safe St. Patrick's Day slash St. Joseph's Day. Oh, the oh, Constantina. I forgot that. Sorry. <laughs> all the Connies out there. And no walking on neighbors' cars. I've seen it. I've seen it at the other parades. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join in singing for the last time this Lent, number 133, Save Your People. Number 133, verses 3 and 4.